Well, hi everyone, this is Evangelist Joel Torres. Welcome to Word of Power. And those of you joining me for the very first time, welcome. Well, I'm excited about this new word that I'm going to share with you today called the Kingdom Seed of Life Within Us. You know, we see evidence that God is a sower and that God has been sowing kingdom seed in you. And so we're going to see some of this and how God has sowed the kingdom seed of the fill of your life to fulfill the fill of dreams that he has already predetermined and preordained for your tomorrows. Amen. You know, God, we see this uh, evident, uh, as I said, in Ephesians 1 before, in verse 4 to 5, where God has already preconceptualized us and saw us holy and blameless and had already a plan of our lives already planned out and for the very purpose of what adopting us into his kingdom as his children and this gave him great pleasure. Amen. Thank God for that. And we see the evidence of this, even the way he created the world. And all these things and the purpose of creating this world was so that we could be planted here on this earth. So that we could activate those kingdom seeds of life that has power to create what he has already purposed for your life and has already spoken it. You know, 2 Timothy uh, 3.16 says this, it says that every scripture is God breathed and everything that God speaks out of his mouth comes the power of creation and creates its purpose and what he purposed for whatever it is will come into being and God has already, God breathed his word into your life and has given and planted those kingdom seeds that will produce the victories for your tomorrow. So let's, let's look at some scripture regarding this. And let's go into Genesis 1. I'm going to read uh, Genesis 1, verses 1 and 2. And I want to stop at 2 because there's something I just want to point out and emphasize on. And it says this, In the beginning God prepared, formed, fashioned, and created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and empty waste, and darkness was upon the face of the very great deep. The Spirit of God was moving, hovering, brooding over the face of the waters. Hey man, I want to stop there just for a second. Here it is the Holy Spirit is hovering, is brooding. What is that word brooding? Well, it's shadowing over, shadowing over, waiting for God to say, let there be light. It went and it gave a produced life. The creation power of God's word produced in the Holy Spirit went and when God said receive the water so that land would come forth that's exactly what happened that power that of, of his word began to produce the power of creation of the kingdom produce exactly what he spoke of understand it's that same power that God has created the word the world from is the very same kingdom seed that he put in our spirit and put it in the fields of our lives. Now, let's see another example of that hovering and brooding over in Jeremiah 1. Remember Jeremiah 1, uh, verse 11, where God says to Jeremiah, What do you see, Jeremiah? And Jeremiah answered, I see a branch of an almond tree, an emblem representing alertness and activity. And God said, You see well, you see correctly. I am alert and actively over my word, watching over my word, ready to perform it. So there's a two-part question there and two answers to that. And I believe that God is telling Jeremiah, what you see before you is exactly with such great clarity is the way I'll set that before you so that you understand what it represents and know what's ahead of you. Because that's the way I see it. That's the way I want you to see it. The way I am actively and, and alert, I want you to be the same way. I want you to be what, what you had described and whatever it is. I want you to be active and alert. And that's what God wants us to be through the power of his word. He wants us to be active and alert so that we're ready to receive the new thing that he has sprung forth before our lives. Amen. In Isaiah. And so God is, is hovering. The Holy Spirit, he gave us his spirit, and that same spirit that was there <laughs> hovering over the waters in creation of this world is over you. Why? Because you have this kingdom seed in you. Let's talk about kingdom seed. Um, 
Let's look at Matthew. Uh, Matthew 13, verse 31. Jesus talks about this kingdom seed. He's talking, he's sharing uh, several parables to the disciples, and then he comes to this one uh, parable, and he says this in verse 31 of Matthew 13. He says, he told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted in his field, Though it was the smallest of all your seeds, yet when it grows, it is the largest of the garden plants and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and perch in its branches. Oh my gosh, look at this. So God has already, we take this, this kingdom seed and we apply it in our lives. And that what God has already put in us, and we begin to apply it in the field of our life, will begin to produce in perfection, in through the kingdom power of creation, will create the victories of your tomorrow. Will create the dreams, what he has dreamed up. What is that? The hope. And the hope will produce the revelation of what God wants you to become and its purpose. God already set it in motion. There's nothing that can stop it. <laughs> Amen. Once God said it, and as just as this man planted in his field of life, the uh, the tree the seed began to go into a tree and the birds purged on the branches. Well, let me tell you, so when your life is like a tree and begins to purge out and branch out in all directions that will connect everything that you need in life, remember what's going to purge on your branches of life. His joy is going to uh, purge on your branches. His peace is going to purge on your branch. Uh, his his power, his authority, uh, his goodness, his love, I mean, deliverance, all these things will purge on the branches of your life. Amen. The fullness of God will, brand, will purge on the branches of your life. And this is where the kingdom seed, God has sown this kingdom seed into your life. And Jesus here tells you that the kingdom is like a mustard seed. Amen. Praise God. And what is that seed, that, what, that, that word? Well, God did something even better. And like a sower, he gave us the living word. And who is that? Jesus. So let's look at that in uh, John chapter 1. And I'm going to read uh, verses 1 through 5 and then 9 through 14. And then um, verse 16. Okay, and I'll finish in verse 16. But look at this. In the beginning before all time, with the Word, Christ. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God Himself. Verse 2. He was present originally with God. In verse 3. All things were made and came into existence through Him, and without Him was not even one thing made that has come into being. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. Look at verse 5. And the light shines on in the darkness, for the darkness has never overpowered it, put it out, or absorbed it, or appropriated it, and is unreceptive to it. Oh, wow. Look, did you hear what that just said? The darkness has no power over it. Once God has spoken, you know, God says, I will send out my word, and what? It will accomplish all that I sent it out to do and fulfill its purpose, and it will not return void. Let me, there, why? Because it comes purely from the kingdom, and through Christ, all things were created through Christ. Why? Because He was the living Word. And who is it that you have in you? You have Christ. The living Word has just now activated, has just executed that seed, the kingdom seed that's in your field of life, and it's about what through the power of creation create its purpose, that God has set forth before your life, and it will not return void. There is no nothing here on earth, no man, no angel, no devil, not even Satan himself, can stop what God has already set in motion on your behalf. You know, another thing I want to point out, you know, in Psalms 139, David discovers his identity. And he finds, he finds that how true this is. And he says that God even knew him while he was yet in his mother's womb. He was fearfully, fearfully and wonderfully made. But in verse 16, he says that all my days were all ordained and written in a book before one even came into being. 
God, no matter where David came from, and he came from a lineage of shepherds, but God had already preordained kingship <laughs> over his life. Amen. So understand that God has preordained kingship in you. Why? Because it's a kingdom seed and God has adopted us. We are of the kingdom of God and God has sealed it with the promised Holy Spirit in Ephesians uh, chapter 1 verse 13 and has sealed it with that Holy Spirit. It's a done deal that what guarantees our inheritance. What is that inheritance? your birthright amen it is a kingdom seed that came through a birthright that comes from the living word jesus that you have in you is now in is now ready to be executed in your life in your field of dreams and when that begins to branch out the the very fullness of god himself is going to purge on every branch that is that your life branches out to in this life producing its purpose that God has already set forth, already preordaining your victories for tomorrow. Amen. Let's go on. Look at this. Uh, let's go on to uh, uh, verse 9. or uh, no, Yeah, okay, verse 9 through 14. Look what it says here. There it was, the true light was then coming into the world, the genuine, perfect, steadfast light that illuminates every person. He came into the world and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him, did not know him. He came to what which belonged to him, his own, his dominion, creation, things, world. And they who were his own did not receive him and did not welcome him. But to as many as did receive and welcome him, he gave the authority, power, privilege, right, to become the children of God, that is, to those who believe in, adhere to, trust in, and rely on His name. Amen. Now look at 13. We were just talking about Psalms 139. Look what it says here. 13. Who owe their birth neither to bloods nor to the will of the flesh, that of physical impulse, nor to the will of man, that of a natural father, but to God they are born of God. And the word Christ became flesh, human, incarnated, and tabernacled, fixed his tent of flesh, lived a while among us, and we actually saw his glory, his honor, his majesty, such glory as only begotten Son receives from his Father, full of grace, favor, loving kindness, and truth. Now look at 16, and listen, to, look at what it says. For out of his fullness, abundance, we have all received, all had a share, and we were all supplied with one grace after another, and spiritual blessing upon spiritual blessing, and even favor upon favor, and gift, and gift heaped upon gift. <laughs> Are you getting a hold of this? Are you getting a hold of what God has already put in this living seed, the kingdom seed? It's already there, ready to go. Oh my gosh, that God has already predetermined, and so it doesn't matter where you came from, what you were born out of, that has no power, it has nothing to do with what God has already spoken. God had released kingdom seeds of life into your field of life for you to fulfill your field of dreams, your field of dreams, amen. You know, God has dreamed big for you. And that is the hope, the hope that will bring in your future, your victories for your tomorrow. Amen. Know that God has already predestined your life. So it doesn't matter. Just as King David describes in 139, he discovers this new identity that he has. And it, and it was more than he realized of himself that God had something even bigger. Imagine that. That even King Saul that turned against him, out to try to kill him, try to destroy his life, couldn't do it because of what God had already proceeded and spoke that kingdom seed in his life. Nothing could kill that dream that God had for David to become the king of Israel. 
So no, understand that no matter what you face, no matter what seems that, that's likely against you, it has no power, no power to squash that seed that God has given. Why? Because it's through Christ that everything comes through. Because He is the life. He is the light of men, you and me, and every woman that God has, has created. Amen. So understand that God has already set things in motion for your victories for tomorrow. Amen. So understand that God uh, as gives life. There is life. Oh, praise God. I mean, this is a powerful word. If you can get a hold of this and understand that God has already predestined your life. And no matter what you face, know that God, the word says, if God is for us, who can be against us? Why? Because you're more than conquerors. The God has already proceeded in releasing that seed. And he reinforced that idea by giving us, by sowing his son Jesus Christ on the cross for our lives. So those seeds will come into fruition in your life. Amen. You know, Psalms uh, 1 talks about the man who pursue his word, his, the precepts, the, the instructions and teachings of God is like a tree that's firmed, planted in the water. And those water begin to nurture and produce its fruit in due season. There is a harvest waiting for you that God has already set in motion because it is a living kingdom seed. The kingdom of God is like a seed of mustard seed. It's like the seed, it's like the mustard seeds. Amen. It may be, it may be, you see, what you see may seem small, but boy, it is compact with the power of creation that's going to create something big in your life. Because that's the way God thinks. You see, Psalms um, or Isaiah 55 8 says, For our thoughts are not his thoughts, nor his ways our ways. Know that God, once we begin to get a hold of revelation, we'll be able to think like God. We'll be able to do what God is asking us to do because so we'll be able to do it his way because we'll walk in the full knowledge of God. In Colossians 2 9, it talks about the full nature of God being in us. So what? So that we can grow into full spiritual stature. That's the seed. That's the kingdom seed that's causing us to grow into full stature, into more perfection of God because we are made in his likeness and we are his children of the kingdom. So understand that the kingdom seed, God has already set into motion because you have victories for your tomorrows. Amen. Well, I've run out of time. I hope this has been a blessing and this has encouraged you. So please make sure to uh, send in uh, any prayer, uh, prayer requests or any comments. I would love to hear from you. I want to thank all of you for just uh, supporting us in prayer and uh, continuing you to support us in, in viewing our program. As always, thank you so very much. So with that said, have a blessed week and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.